Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. In this session, we will learn about the XPath and Selenium. In this session, we will begin by learning what XPath is, what is its relevance, and in the process of learning about XPath, we shall see its syntax and different types of XPath locators. We shall learn the types of XPath, different XPath functions, and lastly, we will see XPath access. While we learn all of these, we shall see the syntax of them along the side. But before we begin, make sure that you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and click that bell icon so that you can never miss an update from Simply Learn. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started with what is XPath. XPath stands for XML Path Language. It is a Selenium technique that is used to navigate through the HTML structure of a web page. It is a syntax or language that makes finding elements on a web page possible using XML Path expression. There are other locators in Selenium that search for elements using tags or CSS class names and they are simple to use, but then they are not always sufficient and effective. There are times when you need to select all DOM elements of an HTML document, which is when XPath comes to your rescue. The XPath helps in dynamically searching elements with a web page, giving sufficient flexibility to the user. It has always been an essential part of an automation script development to locate a web element and it has always been a challenging task to find the correct, useful and accurate locator in an automation test development process. This is when XPath comes to the picture and provides its various functions to help write effective XPaths. In Selenium Automation, there may be times when elements can be hard to find with general locators like ID, name, class, etc. And this is when XPath is used to locate those elements on the web page. We can use XPath in Selenium on both XML and HTML documents. XPath in Selenium has a basic format or syntax. Here, we can use a syntax that has many keywords. These double slashes are used to select nodes in the document from the current node that match the Selenium no matter where they are. Then, tag name is used to give the tag name as an input. This at the rate symbol is used to select the attribute. The keyword attribute indicates the attribute name of the node. And lastly, the value refers to the value of the node. Next, before we move on to the types of XPath, let's first see the types of XPath locators. As we know by now, XPath is used to locate web elements based on its XML path. Here, the term locator refers to an address that identifies a web element uniquely within the web page. These locators are HTML properties of a web element, which tells the name about the web element it needs to act on. The first type of XPath locator is the ID. The best and the most popular method to identify web elements is by using the ID. And obviously, each element's ID is unique. The second type is the class name. In this case, the class name of the element is used to find the element. The third type is the link text. Here, the link's text is used to find the element. All the hyperlinks on the web page can be identified just by using the link text. We can determine the link on the web page with the help of an anchor tag. The anchor tag is used to create the hyperlinks on a web page and the text between the opening and closing anchor tags constitute the link text. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Then comes the XPath locator that uses the name of the element to find that particular element. The other type of XPath locator is the XPath. This is required by the dynamic element and to traverse between different elements of the web page. The last type of XPath locator is the CSS path. It locates the elements that have no class, name, or ID. Now, let's move further and learn about the types of XPath. There are basically two types of XPath, Absolute XPath and the second one is Relative XPath. If we talk about the Absolute XPath, then it refers to the direct way of finding an element. The major drawback of an Absolute XPath is that if there are any changes in the element's path, then the XPath will fail. The XPath begins with a single forward slash which states that we can select the root node element. The syntax of the absolute XPath looks something like this. You can determine the absolute XPath of any Windows file by right-clicking on the file and then clicking Properties. In the File Properties, first look at the location, which is the path to the file. Next, add a backslash and then the file name to the end of the path.
These actions will give you the absolute XPath of that file. Now, next, let's see the relative XPath. In the case of relative XPath, the path begins from the middle of the HTML DOM structure. Here, the structure with a double slash or double forward slash that states that the element can be searched anywhere on the web page. Relative XPath enables you to write from the middle of the HTML DOM structure without any need to write a long XPath. The syntax of the relative XPath looks like this. A relative path needs to be combined with another path to access a file. Creating a link to an absolute path is easy since you are pointing to the file's internet URL. If you want to find a specific file's relative XPath, certain things must be kept in mind. The file must exist on the same server as the HTML file. The path to the file must be relative to the directory of HTML file. This is what sums up the two types of XPath for us. The next topic in this session is the XPath functions. Now the question arises, what does the term XPath function mean? There may be times when locating a particular web element using general attributes. XPath in Selenium provides XPath functions to write efficient XPaths to discover elements uniquely. There are elements with similar properties like the same name or the same class name. This is when the simple XPath strategies are not efficient and then we need the XPath functions. There are three types of XPath functions. The first type is the XPath contains. The XPath contains in Selenium is a function within the XPath expression used to search for the web elements containing a particular text. It can find the element with partial text. It is used if the part of the value of any attribute changes dynamically like login information etc. And here we can see the syntax of XPath contains function. The contains method accepts two parameters. The attribute of the tag must validate to locate the web element. The value of an attribute is a partial value that the attribute must contain. The second type of XPath function is the XPath text. The XPath text function is a function used to locate the element on the web page using the web elements text. It helps to find the exact text element and it locates the elements within the set of text nodes. The function proves its worth if the element contains a text like a label or etc. So here we can see the syntax of XPath text on the screen. The text method here returned the text of web element when identified by the tag name and compared with the right side's value. Now comes the last type of XPath function that is the XPath starts with function. The XPath starts with function is used to find the element in which the attribute values start with some specific character or a sequence of characters. The function plays a major role while working with the dynamic web pages. We can also use this method to find elements whose attribute value is static, that is not changing. The syntax for the starts with function can be seen on the screen. The starts with accepts two parameters. The attribute of the tag must validate to locate the web element and the attribute value is the partial value of the attribute with which the attribute is expected to start. After the XPath functions, let's move on to our next and final topic that is the XPath access. All the XML DOM elements are in a hierarchical structure and can be either located using absolute path or relative paths. For this, XPath provides a specific attribute called XPath access. XPath access in Selenium are methods used to identify those dynamic elements that are impossible to find by normal XPath methods such as ID, class name, name, etc. Access are so named because they tell about the access on which elements lie relative to an element. Here, an access shows a relationship to the current node and helps locate the relative nodes concerning the tree's current node. So, the XPath axis uses several nodes to find those nodes in the DOM structure. Let's have a look on some axes that help in locating the elements on the web page. The first XPath axis is the ancestor. The ancestor axis selects all ancestor elements, grandparent, parent, etc. of the current node. Then comes the ancestor or self. This axis is used to locate the current node along with its ancestors. 
Along that comes the attribute axis. The attribute axis are used to specify the attributes of the current node. Then comes the child axis. As the name suggests, it selects all the children elements of that current node. The next axis is the descendant axis. It is used to locate the children of the current node to the leaf node. Then comes the descendant or self axis that is used to locate the current node with its descendants. After that comes the following axis which locates all the nodes that come after the current node. Now comes the parent axis that is used to locate the parent of the current node. And at the last we have the self axis. The self axis are used to locate current or the present nodes. There are several other nodes other than these that we have just seen. There is a preceding axis used to select all nodes that come before the current node. Then a following sibling node that selects the following siblings of the context node and siblings are at the same level as the current node. There is one axis called the parent that selects the parent of the current node. And so with this, we have come to the end of this session. I hope you guys find it informative and helpful. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Until next time, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.